This is Matt Bergman, and you are listening to the Punk Rock Libertarians podcast, episode 82. I'm here tonight with Joshua Stoffelophagus. Hello, hello. Hey, Josh. How's it going, man? Pretty good, man. I had a, a pretty crazy fucking week. So uh, Yes, you did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first, I was like uh, sick off my ass with like a, a sinus infection, and then... Um, so I missed a few days at work, a few days of work, mm -hmm. and uh, my girlfriend uh, Jill was. Uh, in the meanwhile, you know, she's she was just ready to have a kid any day. Yes, and then um, yes, she was. So it's basically, and I've, I'm still on, on like the tail end of the sinus thing, and uh, but you know, on on like up until like even like early Friday, I still had a fever, and I was, I was just feeling horrible. And then Friday yeah. Friday night, we had to go to the hospital. At like uh, ten o'clock at night, and oh man, it, it, it was just nuts. So like, we go to the hospital, and then uh, you know we we finally uh, you know we were able to get in there, and we see a nurse, and uh, you know because we just had to rush down to the hospital because uh, the the contractions were like uh, about like eight minutes apart, uh -oh, and then that's uh, it. And it, yeah, and then like Jill's doctor was telling her, you wait until they're about five minutes apart for two the, hours yeah, straight. Two hours straight. Yep, that's go time. But yeah, they, they were like eight minutes apart, and she was, and then it, like at first it wasn't as big of a deal, but then they they started to be very painful and eight minutes apart. Oh boy. So you know that's when we we're like, you know, fuck it. She's like, you know, we just got to go down there now. So yeah, it's fine. And then um, yeah, Stella's coming down. So Stella, Stella. Stella's my uh, pit bull. And uh, so anyways, so we, we go to the St. Agnes Hospital, which is uh, where I was born, um, where most of the, the people bit of history, I, most of the people that I, I grow up that I grew up with that live in this area were born there. And uh, so anyways, we go to St. Agnes and, uh, you know, like we, we see the nurse and eventually we're able to be uh, put in a room as soon as they have a room open up. The, the hospital must have been really busy on a Friday night in the uh, the labor the delivery um, section. <laughs> so, um, at any rate, so th then we're, we're we're down there and the contractions are getting more and more painful. And you know, Jill's waiting for epidural because they're like just really painful. I, I don't know how because um, I, I gotta say, like um, as far as the, the whole pregnancy goes, like. You know, I, I've I've seen I've known a bunch of pregnant women. You know, just fr friends who were pregnant or um, mm -hmm. friends with uh, pregnant girlfriends' wives. Yeah. And I gotta say, like through this whole thing, like Jill was the the, the biggest trooper that I've ever seen. It, it was she was just like really just like tough as tough as hell. And uh, so w like when she was when she was actually in in pain with these contractions, I was like, whoa, what the fuck? And so she's waiting for this epidural, and there's some there's some sort of emergency going on in the hospital where like the only two people there that that do the epidurals were like working on some sort of emergency so uh the zombie apocalypse oh it, it was nuts like uh so she wasn't able to get her epidural till like uh 1 30 in the morning <laughs> i don't know like I, I, after seeing uh like before the drugs and after the drugs I, I just don't understand why anybody would want to say do it. yes to drugs. <laughs> say I say mean, yes to uh, drugs to help ease the pains of childbirth. I, I mean, you know, just from what I saw, well, once again, she's a total trooper, and it it, it just seemed like like horrible if pain. She's, if she's like after the epidural, the pain, there was then... nothing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. so and anyway, so that's like one thirty in the morning, and then um, so she has the epidural, and then so at, at that point she's gonna try to like uh, go to bed and, and get some sleep, but uh, you know she's like laying down, she can't really fall asleep, um, and then so you know I'm such a uh, I'm such a workaholic for uh, punk rock libertarians and the, the Daily Liberator that I'm actually oh, you are. that I'm actually in the fucking uh, delivery room. Um, working on uh, articles at like uh, from two o'clock in the morning until four o'clock in the morning. Like I'm it's ridiculous. Like, I'm yeah. I'm like steadily working on, on these articles. Liberty, liberty doesn't take a break. Now you have more to defend. Yeah. So I mean, it's basically like that's just how like you know how how much I like put into this shit. So I don't know, and. I mean, it's really, it's crazy. Like, for instance, like this week, like I was thinking like, okay, well, you know, since, since, since I've been doing the podcast, I've never missed a podcast. 
You know, I've, I've never missed a week. There, there's never been a week that's went by that we haven't shot a podcast. You know, I've yeah. had people cancel out and luckily uh, I'll be able to find somebody else to make up for it. Or if we can't do it on Sunday nights, I'll, I'll, I'll somehow get it to work. I'll get people over here to do it, to do a podcast. Yeah. And it's, it's like with this week, um, I was thinking, well, you know, with, with the baby and stuff, you know, we're not going to do a podcast this week. But then, uh, earlier I messaged Josh and I'm like, uh, I'm like, Josh, you know, um, I, I, you know, I, I was not going to do a podcast this week, but you know, I really, I haven't missed one yet and I'd, I'd like to be able to do it, you know? So I'm thinking, uh, either Monday or Tuesday night, you know, we'll get together later at night and try to do a podcast if time permits. And Josh is like, yes, no problem. Yeah, absolutely. And then I ask other people and it's like, oh, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night, oh, my vagina hurts. Huh? <laughs> and it's, I mean, I don't know. It, it's like. So, you know, I was, I was up till four o'clock in the morning in the delivery room working on, uh, articles for the website, aggregating stuff for, for the next day. And then, uh, I get, I get two hours of sleep and then, uh, we have to start delivering the baby because it's, it's, I guess, you know, shit's getting real at that point. And then, uh. You know, we're like, this lift, is some we're, serious we're shit, like dude. lifting me and the nurse are like lifting Jill's leg up and she's pushing. And then, uh, we had about an hour and a half, an hour and a half of that. And then at uh, seven thirty two in the morning, um, my first child, Eva Aubrey Bergman was born at seven thirty two in the morning. And, uh, she was seven pounds, three ounces. Seven and, pounds, uh, three ounces. yeah, it, it's crazy, man. It, it is just, uh. It's crazy to just to be in the room you're, for that happening. You're a dad. Uh, yeah, it, it's weird, man. It, it's uh, it, just hearing you say that. It, yeah, it's you're weird. a dad. It, it's definitely weird. Um, it, it's it's really cool. Um, yeah, I love my daughter. You know, it, it's uh, it's fucking awesome. It, it's definitely definitely cool. You're gonna you're gonna be listening to those 15 songs with a lot more meaning now. <laughs> Every time Jeff sings about his girls. Oh uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I guess that's uh, I, I guess that's like that uh, with you know with uh, other things in, in your life, you know, too. When, when you know, you can listen to a song a million times, and then you have something happen in your life, and then you hear that song again, and it, it's it's like it had meaning for you before, but you know now it has like greater meaning, or, mm -hmm. or you you feel like you understand the artist more. And you might not even understand the artist more. It, it just might be that, that it's coming off uh, differently to you now. You know what I mean? Like your yeah, your perspective yeah, yeah. is, is forever a, changed. I mean, you don't even have to have a completely relatable story to the entire song. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes there's just something about a song that registers and it makes it, it just makes you. Yeah, it may only make you think about a, a, a time period in your life yeah. or something going on in your life. And it's. It, you know, it, it could sometimes be nothing close to even what what the song is about. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, it's, it's really it's still relatable. There's something about it that's just very relatable for that instance or whatever. It's the truth. Totally. So yeah. it's you why know, we go through musical phases. I think. I think sometimes certain when certain emotions become a little more constant, you, sometimes you gravitate towards one type of music more than another. Yeah, I mean, for for me, it's 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 always been like I'm at any given time in my life. It seems like I'm listening to like ninety percent punk rock, and I, I don't. But sometimes you all go through periods where I've listened to like uh, a lot of like indie hip hop, or um, you know, I'll go back to like my like old school country roots of like you know Johnny Cash, Hank Williams, shit like that. Mm -hmm. But you know, if, for me, it's it's like it's kind of like home base is always punk rock. It's. Uh, yeah, yeah I've been, uh, I don't know, as I've gotten older, I mean, I still have great appreciation for a lot of punk, for a lot of punk bands. I still do occasionally indulge in a, in a lot of punk bands, but, um, I found my gra myself gravitating more towards like doom, like stoner, like psychedelic rock. I've gone like complete, we completely backwards. I mean, I grew up with my dad being a punk. I went from that to, uh, listening to hardcore and then, you know, I had like, between that, I was still listening to pop, like some more pop punk, like MXPX and all that other shit. Dude, what about your ICP phase? I never had that. <laughs> I never had that. I never liked those. Uh, I never liked that whole thing. I missed that part. Like, I missed a lot of the whole, like, me, growing up in the 90s was weird for, for me because I didn't have as much exposure to those bands. Like, oh, I, re I remember, like, Smashing Pumpkins, but I, I didn't, it wasn't, I didn't 
hear about like uh, like Caius or any of those bands from the '90s that you don't hear about a lot, like uh, Temple of the Dog. Kind of, I, I didn't get, the, I didn't really hear about that or Pearl Jam. I found Pearl Jam, but I don't know. That was just the '90s. Yeah, I gotta say, uh, I was a, a big fan of Pearl Jam um, around when like. Uh, the first album I, I ten was, I was, was fucking great. Man. See, I always thought that that was okay. Oh, and then, dude, uh, ten was fucking great. It's w- w- when they really did it for me. It was like, uh, by the way, people are probably like, "Oh, this fucking posers listen to the Pearl Jam," but whatever, fuck you. Um, this is like, uh, you know, I guess it when when ten like he came was out, and shit like that, man. Yeah, like when ten came out, I, I don't know. Ten, I always thought was like eh, it was okay, um, but I really liked uh, Versus and then uh, Vitology even more so. I don't both those albums. I I, I still stand by I those. Know, man, I never really I never, got into that. I never throw ten on. I never do. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I kind of feel like the radio played out all those songs. It's like I never I mean, have to listen to them again. They're they're just gonna. I'm gonna hear them in somebody's car or something, and that'll be enough for me. Yeah, it's, I mean, but but I I will pop on versus or Vitology every now and then. You realize now that shit's considered classic rock. If you turn on a classic rock station, you'll hear Pearl Jam and Nirvana. Yes, I, I realize I'm fucking old. Thank no, you, dude, Joshua. it's fucking terrible, man. <laughs> it, it makes me feel fucking old. I don't like. I mean, I still I love uh, I love fucking Alice in Chains and I mean Smashing Pumpkins absolutely. I well, mean, for for some reason in the past week, like I've been listening to a lot of like uh, old Offspring. Whole offspring. I was actually listening to MXPX the other day. Believe it or not, man, I I, I dragged that that album out and I I was listening to that. Which one were you listening to? Uh, I was listening to Poconaccia. I put on the first one. I put on the first one. Yeah, which, I, haven't, I haven't listened to that. Which forever. wasn't the first one I got of theirs. Actually, the first album I think I got of theirs was Teenage Politics. Um, my dad got me that, and um, then I got. Uh, the first one then i got poking at you and then it was like life in general and they just they dump, they dumped out records like every other fucking year yeah i think life in general was the first one that i got that was a great fucking album yeah. i really liked that it was, it was right after it came out and then when i got that i'm like oh this is cool and, and i checked out their earlier stuff and uh you know their earlier stuff was, was pretty cool too but i still think life in general was just like you know from beginning to end a great album minus the chick magnet song if you ask me <laughs> yeah, I have to say that I I really I really think that that was a really good record. I really do. Um, I mean, I like them. Jeez, I mean, I remember hoping that I would be able to. I'm like, you know, I'll never get a chance to see this band because at one point, you know, they were just a small band on a tiny Christian label, and you're like, ah, these, this band will never ever come around. I'll never get to see them. Because you know they're you know they're teenagers at that point they were still teenagers, and I still I rem- still remember getting a chance to see them. It was fucking great. Um, I saw them at uh, at the Vanderbilt uh, in Plainview on Long Island. That was a great show, man. Do you remember that band, uh, the Huntingtons? Yeah, yeah, the Huntingtons. The yeah, Huntingtons they were, on, were uh, the, Tooth the, and Nails as well. Yep, they were the. Uh, they didn't start out that way. Well, um, they're actually from Maryland. Huntington's? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my buddy uh, Chris Eller, he actually plays drums for them right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember it's the pretty first crazy. time I heard He's actually, them. like, I think some of the guys from that band, too, are were playing with uh, CJ Ramon right now. And Chris has actually, like, toured with them to, like, I think he went to, like, Brazil or some shit. Like, he's, yeah. he's been going all over with CJ Ramon. It's pretty yeah, CJ, badass. CJ fucking, CJ lives on Long Island. He's He lives in, uh, like, a... Uh, Oakdale or Sayville, same thing with Marky Ramon lives over there too. Uh, my my buddy Jarrett uh, cuts CJ's hair. Uh, <laughs> I'm no joke at Iron and Tread uh, in Sayville, and um, yeah, man, he's a he's a local guy. Yeah, like I've seen pictures of CJ Ramon recently too. Like I, I don't think that I would ever recognize him. Like you know, like uh, if if I didn't. You know, know from the pictures. Oh, that's Cesar Ramon now. I don't think I would ever. If, if I saw no. him, I don't think I'd ever I, recognize him. No, I mean, I can. I I would recognize him. I mean, it would take a minute just because I'm not. I would would never expect that I would bump into CJ Ramon. Um, but I would completely recognize him, especially because like, I actually I have the Ramones last concert on on VHS. Oh, we're out of here. Uh, yeah, I have it on VHS. Yeah. I have that at home. Uh. And I love that. I used to, I watched, used to watch it over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> my dad used to tell me to stop playing the Ramones thing again. God. <laughs> and my dad, my dad grew up seeing the Ramones. My dad was a big, big Ramones Clash fan. 
Uh, but he's like, all right, come on, stop playing that. I would definitely recognize him. Yeah, it's like uh, Status Ned. He comes on the podcast every now and then. He, he actually <laughs> grew up, and he grew up, he actually went to see uh, Minor Threat and Bad Brains and shit. You know, just growing up in uh, Maryland, Baltimore, like Silver Spring area, like he just went to shows and saw all those like early bands, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. His, his wife used to date um, Brian Baker from Dag Nasty. So, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy to talk to him and he's like, uh, you know, he just tell me all these stories, you know, because by the time I got into Minor Threat, it was like 1993 or 1994. I was like 14 years old. And, you know, and, you know, hearing about hearing minor threat and it's like, well, they, they were around from like 1980 to 83. And it's like, wow, it just seemed like so long ago. I was like, you know, three years old when they broke up and, you know, and then to talk to this dude that was actually at all these shows, yeah. it's just pretty badass. It's a lot, a lot of history. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man. So, uh, it's just it's been, been a crazy, crazy fucking week for, for me over here. <laughs> and uh thanks for coming on tonight on such uh short notice man yeah it's, man of uh, course fucking rocks man so, always down for the cause brother yeah man we do this because we love this so uh yeah know. man this is fun I always have a good time awesome man yeah it, it's uh always I, I dig it that's why i put so many hours into it <laughs> <laughs> and uh wow so um you know i guess there's a lot of big news this week too you know um last night uh you know uh Yesterday, we actually, I, I guess I, 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 before we get into the uh, or the first thing we were going to talk about, it was like yesterday, I, I was like, it, I'm just thinking about when we were at the hospital. Um, so, you know, like tonight we're recording the podcast on a Monday. We normally record on Sundays. So, you know, like I said, the baby was born on uh, Saturday morning at about 7.30 a.m. So then, you know, Saturday, um, I only got two hours of sleep and then I was up to like... Uh, you know, I was up all fucking day. Yeah. And then, uh, on Sunday, you know, like I was like, I was telling Jill, Jill, we got to leave Sunday. Like, cause you know, the hospital tries to keep you there as long as possible because they want your money. And it's like the insurance companies try to get you out of there as quickly as possible because they don't want to pay the money to keep you there. Yeah. Meanwhile, I just want to get the fuck out of the hospital. You know, I don't want to chill in a fucking hospital. Like that's all my, that's my whole thing. Smoke a celebratory J. Yeah, actually, I haven't smoked since, uh, I don't know, it's been a while. I mean, like I said, I've had the sinus shit going on. Yeah. So, uh, but anyways, so we get out of the hospital and, you know, somebody tells us at like 1245, this this nurse tells us that um, the doctor has the uh, has the discharge papers and she just needs to sign them or something. You know, this is like 1245 and, you know, we don't hear back until like three o'clock that the discharge papers are signed. So, you know... It, it it's just like so ridiculous to me. I'm sitting there and like, this is just me. This is how I think I'm thinking, okay, we can leave right now. You know, um, the only thing that's stopping us from leaving is, you know, somebody with a title, um, signing their signature on a discharge paper, you know? And, and it's like, you know, if, if I wanted to push it, you know, I think Jill's like a little more easygoing and she's like, Oh, come on. Just like, you know, wait for the, uh, wait, follow the protocol or whatever. Yeah. And, but I'm just like, you know, no, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking to my, this is what I'm thinking inside my head. Cause I'm not trying to like, uh, I'm not trying to like, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, do whatever Jill wants to do. You know, she's like, she's went through a whole bunch of shit <laughs> and, uh, but what I'm thinking in my head is I'm thinking, yeah, the only thing that's keeping us from leaving is this asshole signing this piece of paper. Exactly. You're being and, held hostage. Yeah. It's just, it's fucking ridiculous. And who is this asshole? They have no authority over me. You know, <laughs> it's like, if it were just me and the baby there, I would have just uh, said, no, fuck you. Walk out of the fucking hospital. You just suck my dick and, yeah, <laughs> or, or suck my nuts, you know? <laughs> um, or both at the same time. So, yeah, I said suck my nuts because of Walking Dead last night. That, that oh. was our next subject. So yeah, oh. like, so you know, spoiler, we get, spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert. Okay, so spoiler uh, alert. Yeah, the the season premiere of The Walking Dead. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say who gets killed, but uh, the, the, there's some pretty big deaths, so I, I won't say those. Um, but yeah, dude, it was uh, it was pretty fucking crazy. Do you think we, we can talk about it? I mean, I, I guess I guess we could s announce that we're going to talk about it, and then people could just like stop listening and maybe like tune in later. Now, yeah, or, now now would be a time where we'd say pause it. Yeah, yeah, you might want to like 
pause the podcast because we're going to be uh, dickheads. And I mean, I, I don't know. Cause we'll, I mean, we'll, we'll let you know in the title. Well, the dude, part of me thinks like we're doing this podcast on Monday night. Um, Jared's probably going to come over tomorrow night and mix it. I mean, the soonest this is going to be up is probably Wednesday. So it, you, you haven't can't, seen you can't it be by too then. Mad. If you can't, haven't seen the new episode of The Walking fault. Dead by Wednesday, exactly. It's your own fucking it's your fault. own fucking fault. Dude, I saw people last night announcing that Glenn and uh, Big Red died. You know? <laughs> and uh, I saw people announcing it on Facebook last night. Yes. So, I mean, so. everybody should know that there, there's already fucking. Actually, I think Punk Rock Libertarians even posted some memes about it. Like, uh, um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It what, was did the, like, what did these two know about Hillary? Yeah, it was it was something like that, or or Glenn was saying, uh, "We have to tell everybody we, we, we everybody everything we know about what? Hillary or something." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was, so everybody's got it. Right <laughs> Glenn, but. Glenn is the new, uh, the, the the latest Hillary death, <laughs> dude. That was that was some fucking crazy shit, dude. Yeah. Like uh, fucking fucking Negan, man. It's uh yeah yeah it was fucking nuts, dude. If anybody was wondering whatever happened to Sam and Dean Winchester's father, that's what happened to him. He became Negan on The Walking Dead. Um, however, he is a great, great, great character because you really, as much as you hate him, there's something about him that's so stereotypical, like Gaston. From Beauty and the Beast or some shit. Like he's got this <laughs> arrogance and swagger to him where it's almost, it's almost so overpowering that you're like, you can't not like it because it uh, almost who, who keeps do you think it could surreal. Win, though, between like Negan and Daryl, I don't know because it, it, like that's the thing. Like I don't like, know. Like like I wasn't convinced. Like like when when Negan took uh, Rick and and they got on that in the, on the RV, I was yeah. thinking. I was thinking a couple things. Um, you know, it's basically like like I was watching it with Joe, and well, she, you know she, and she know, was she Rick, was thinking Rick that wouldn't uh, have an arm anyway. So that's what I was thinking. Though. Yeah, yeah, th- th- that's one thing that Joe was saying. Joe, Joe's a big fan of the graphic novels and shit. So, yeah. and you know, um, so she, she was a big fan of that. So she's like, "Well, Rick's arm gets cut off." So, um, she, so she was thinking like, you know, they go on with the hatchet and shit. Yes, Rick's ladies and gentlemen, his, his girlfriend. Knew what happened. She reads graphic novels, so don't believe that stereotype that where's, women don't where's read like, that shit. Oh yeah, she's she's huge into into zombies. You know, this this is why we're you know this is what so, works. This is why we've lasted six years. You know, we're way into a lot of the same things as far as like she's, records and horror movies. She's pretty damn awesome. Thank you. Um, so we're, yeah, all, we're so, all gonna go see Peter Murphy. By the way, <laughs> we're all going to see Peter Murphy. Well, you know, like I was thinking, I was thinking when they got on the RV, I was thinking, you know, uh, Rick and him might get into it, and Rick might come out on top, you know. And but of course, that was not the case at all. That's not at I all what happened. You know what? I like, don't. He totally just like neutered Rick. He absolutely did. He absolutely did. He broke his spirit. He he's the one that he ha- is the one that who who broke his spirit. Um, I don't. I didn't, I knew right away that Rick wasn't gonna come out of this on top. Um, simply not because Rick already it's just conceded. Because you're so smart, dude. No, it's not even that. It's not even because of the graphic novels either. It's the amount of amount of investment and suspense they put into introducing this character to the audience and making them wait an entire season break to actually get a full encounter with him. They would not easily dismiss him for a five-minute fucking scene with Rick on an RV. See, like, like I, I actually need to rewatch like uh, the last season because, like, I've been doing this podcast for the past uh, year and a half straight, mostly on Sunday nights. So I missed a lot of uh, Walking Dead's. So you know, most of last season, like some of them, I would see like the the day after or whatever. But I, I missed a lot, so I, I definitely need to catch up. But. uh yeah it's, yeah, it's definitely. You, I mean, you can tell the the dynamic to the show it has changed. Um, oh, absolutely. It was. I was uh, very sad to see Glenn die. You know, I mean, it's. Uh, you, I don't know. I mean, Glenn to me, if, if favorite characters on the show, um, you know, of course, uh, who's a uh, bow and arrow dude? I, I fucking forget his Darryl? name. Daryl. Daryl. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I, I think I just said bow his name a second ago. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Daryl. Sorry, Norman Reedus. Yeah. In Norman case Reedus. you ever listen to this. Dude, he's, he's like my number one. And uh, like, 
you know, just seeing him uh, in interviews and stuff, and uh, even seeing him on the on the Talking Dead last night, he he's like he's like the only person on the show who comes out with like a drink in his hand. It just reminds me of something that that I would do if I was in his position. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's um, it, it, I don't know. He just seems like my kind of dude. You know, I, I like him. Um, I, I I like Rick's character a lot. You know, I, I like uh, you know how Rick you know tries to do the right thing. Like, uh, he, he just seems to be, uh, you know, pretty centered in his, uh, in his, uh, morality. I, I don't know. I, I like Rick's morality. Um, you know, I, I usually it's like It's questionable Rick. at times. It is. It, it is. But, uh, you know, it's, I think that what's keep, it is, that's what you, keeps you know, him human. You know, Rick's a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. He, he's, you, you know, he's a good guy. Um, so, you know, those, those guys would be like my first and second, you know, Daryl one, Rick number two. So those would be, you know, definitely the people that I wouldn't want to see die. And, um, you know, but Glenn uh, would be right there at number three. I don't know for me. Um, okay. Who, who would be your number th- who, who rank, rank your favorites, my favorite characters that are alive right now, rank your, your faves that are alive right Dead. now. Or, oh, hey, I mean, did anybody die who uh, was your fave? My fave. Um, or, or are they still alive? Like, who, no. who are your faves in Walking Dead of all time? Um, that's hard. Um, I obviously, for the show, it'd be Daryl. Yeah. Uh, Daryl has to be one of my, my top. Um, I do, I really did like, um, uh, what's, I liked, I did like Merle. I like the, in the, I don't know, the, the good and evil aspect to him and Daryl's dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. Th- that was really cool. Yeah. I, I, I was, uh, I didn't want to see Merle die. Like when, when no. he came back into the show, I was like, cool. I hope he sticks around and I hope he kicks ass, you know, um, but it is one of those things. It's like you know, could Merle ever ever get along with the the group? Do, do you think that's possible? I mean, like I I was kind of hoping that that he would stick around and he would, and his brother would just be like, hey, you know, these these people are cool, and he would like kind of fill them in. Here here's how it works, you know. Man, that's what I know. wanted to see. I don't know. I just like I just like Michael Rooker's personality. Though. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I liked him in uh, what was it? Fucking uh, Mall Rats. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know he was in uh, some fucking uh, Chuck Norris movies too. Well, he was in. Uh, well, he was a uh, Henry portrait of a serial killer. Yeah, yeah, that was a. Uh, yeah, that was a great. That was a great movie. You know, I, I I'm not sure if I've ever seen that. I actually bought that at. Uh, I bought that at Blockbuster one time, and uh, it, it was it was in like the VHS uh, bin of like you know cheap shit. And then I, I get it home, and it's Henry portrait of a serial killer two is in there. Oh. And I remember just like popping it on for like ten minutes, and oh, this is fucking dumb. And I was like, just pissed off. <laughs> so, no, not the original. But, yeah, I don't think I don't think I've ever seen the original. Yeah, you, it's worth. I have it on Blu-ray. If you want to watch it, it's uh, it's definitely worth it. I think I'm just gonna hold out for the laser disc. No, <laughs> the laser disc. <laughs> It looks like a silver record, but okay, it's really so, a laser disc. So, uh, other than Merle, like, like who else? Um, uh, to be to be honest, I did like Dale. Oh yeah, I, I like Dale, but I mean, he's like, he he, he was. I, I did. I liked him a lot, but he was he was just more expendable. I thought. I I know. I just for his his moral compass. I definitely like oh, Dale. Oh, yeah. no, I, I did too. Yeah, just for that same reason. I was upset when he died. I mean, I, I wouldn't even say I was really upset, but I mean... Um, You're your cold bastard, Josh. Yeah, I was upset that... I'm not really upset when these characters die. Um, I really do like Carl, though. I've really grown to really like his character. Yeah, he's, he's less of a little bitch. It's not even that. It's just watching his <laughs> watching his evolution and watching actually watching him grow up. You, you mean that's the thing with a show like this. You're literally watching the actor grow up. You're watching the uh, the character grow up. So there's you're watching a dual, you know, a duality of maturity level and how they're interacting with each other. So I think that his uh, I think his role is much more pivotal because he's not only maturing. Uh, as a as a character, um, but he's more he's maturing as an actor. 
Yeah, he's kicking ass. Like, if, if he lives, like, past puberty, he's going to fucking he's gonna be a force I, to be reckoned he, with. I, I really think his... his uh, e- even now, I mean, he's kicking ass. I think he's, you know, him growing up and t- and growing up with these skills, by the time he reaches, like, his father's age, yeah, like you said, if he's still alive, he's going to be... He's going to be Jedi level. He's, yeah, he's going to be a Jedi <laughs> at that point. He's yeah. going to be, you know, he's going to have that robe. <laughs> that Jedi robe. Yeah, fucking Negan, man. Oh, dude. That was, like, fucking... Th- I, that was just fucking painful to watch, like, uh, you know... What's, who's uh, Big Red? Like, oh, what, Abraham. Fucking, Abraham, yeah. To, to yeah. watch, like, him and, and Glenn get their, like, heads bashed in. Uh, that was just fucking... Uh, that, I that mean, fucking and brutal. I'm not talking, like... Like, it, the one thing that I, I did... I do think this was... Um, I was talking with a few people about it, and... Uh, we were saying, oh, he's like, oh, well, you know, it wasn't that brutal, it wasn't that big of a deal. Ah, uh, whatever. But, but, Fuck you. <laughs> but here's the thing: as far as the gore level, blah blah blah, it wasn't really that big of a deal. As far as I thought, it was pretty, pretty bad gore, dude. As, I mean, I thought it was pretty well, badass but, gore. But it was, it was. But what I'm saying, talking about, like, is it? It, it wasn't. Dude, I, this is coming from a person. Like, I, I've got to own it. it I've got to own like close to a thousand horror movies, and I, I would say that that's that's badass gore, dude. I'm not saying it wasn't. What I'm saying is it's not shocking. You know what I mean? To us it's not that's not shocking. Well, yeah, I mean that's like but to say the gore the gore was good. It was done very very well. But what I think I think the horror aspect of it is the fact that uh with Glenn the um you know the the people that watch the show have had now almost 7 years of attachment to that character yes 7 years so they've had a 7 year long fictitious relationship where they've literally had an emotional investment in and he gets his skull bashed in and you actually see him look up with the dent in his skull you yeah, know, I mean, with, and, and he's he's such like a lovable character. Yeah. Like, I can't think of uh, any time where I'm like, oh, Glenn, stop being an asshole. Whereas, you know, you can think about, you can name times when Rick was an asshole. You can name times when Daryl was an asshole. Um, you know, you can name times when probably pretty much everybody was an asshole at some point. Yeah. But Glenn. Not Glenn. Yeah, yeah I, I can't, Glenn. can't name one, you know. He was just always, no. a, he was always a cool little dude, you know. <laughs> and his last words were, Maggie, I love you. Yeah, it was like, oh god, the let. I was talking like it. He was struggling to speak. The whole and Negan was making fun. Oh, are you are you trying to say something? And and then you know when they when they take Daryl with them, when Negan takes Daryl, it's just like you know I I feel like if they left Daryl there, I I, you know I feel like Daryl is Daryl's badassery level. Like I feel like Daryl might be able to take Negan. I he would be the only one I would say. I, I, yeah, he'd be the only one that 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 I would think could, would, could rem- stand would a remotely stand a chance. Exactly, yeah, exactly. But you know, taking Daryl with them, it's like yeah. <laughs> I think I think that Daryl's learned to channel that into his negative side into something proactive. I don't think Rick has done that. Rick definitely is a mu- much more emotionally breakable. Um, whereas I don't think Daryl is, I think Daryl, Daryl grew up and lived broken. So he, I think he's learned how to adapt to that a lot better. Yeah. That's probably a, that's a fair point. Yeah. So Daryl, Daryl will be the only one that would even say has stands a remote chance at surviving. Yeah. But meanwhile, he's, he's kidnapped. Who knows what the fuck they're going to do to him. Um, yeah, can't wait for next week. <laughs> that's that's one of the things too. Like I'm I'm watching the shit last night, and uh, you know you, you don't find out like who got killed till like half halfway through the episode. You 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 know you should find out in the first minute, but no, they they string it out, of course, and you know they're gonna string it out. You know, I mean for for that matter, like going into it, I was thinking, oh these assholes, they, they, you might not even find out at all tonight. They might go to like, they might go to like. Uh, um, you know, like one of the back characters that wasn't there, you know, like they might go to some backstory and make you wait till next week or something. I, I didn't know what was going to happen, but, uh, um, yeah. A- anyway, so that was, that was some fucked up shit. So <laughs> yeah, let, let, let's move on to the, the news this week. So, uh, did you watch the final debate? I watched the debate. It was pretty shitty. It was, um, it was just another useless back and forth, back and forth. Both their eyes were bloodshot. Um, 
Hillary was a little more, uh, the white balance I noticed was off on one side uh, as opposed to another. Um, Donald Trump looked less orange and Hillary looked a little like she had a little more color to her. Um, which was strange. Um, but they were still pandering, doing the same shit, never answering questions directly, j hopping around, jumping around, WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks. But uh, Donald Trump went for all the corruption. That's the one thing that I hate to say that I have to give credit where credit's due, but to, I mean, to him, of all people, anytime he brought up Hillary, he brought up something about corruption. It was something different. So all he kept saying was, she's corrupt, this is why. She, he's, she's corrupt, this is why. Over and over and over and over and over. So nothing he said while criticizing her was actually wrong. I mean, I'm sure he embellished on certain aspects of things, which is like, which are factually incorrect, but... All he did was basically point out why she's fucked. Well, yeah, I mean, she's fucking horrible, man. She's fucking horrible, but I mean, so is Trump. Oh, he's like, a piece uh, of shit, too. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I saw this article that came out um, the other day. John Vibes wrote it. Like, somehow he, he tracked down a uh, he tracked down a piece that uh, Donald Trump wrote for CNN in 2008, where he's basically calling for open borders for like you know like yeah. it'll, it'll work for everybody for the economy and stuff. And it's basically like uh, it's it's polar opposite of what he's saying right now with you know 45 percent tariffs on Chinese goods and and whatnot. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's just so funny, man. It, it's like, I, I see shit like that. And I just think like, wow, I mean, this guy's got to be in Hillary Clinton's back pocket, you know? Um, whereas at the same time, it's like, oh, this is ridiculous. Like how, how do you pull off such a scheme? Um, and it did, but then, then you hear about the fucking, uh, WikiLeaks when, uh, you know, they're uh, apparently, uh, the media elevated Trump. Because they knew that Trump would not be able to beat Hillary. You know, they were more scared of, like, Rand Paul. Yeah. That's another thing you found out. You know, the media was more scared of Rand Paul. Even though Rand Paul wasn't doing well in the Democratic debate, they knew that they didn't want him to go against up against Hillary Clinton. Um, another thing I read earlier was uh, Kasich. Um, Kasich w would actually do better. It would beat Hillary Clinton by, like, eight points. You know? It's just... Uh, you know, Kasich, I mean, he's like, John, I'm, not, I'm not saying Kasich's like libertarian or anything. I'm just saying like, you know, as far as like the average person or it's just going to like He's close to the most moderate candidate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just he's, in between everything. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, uh, I, I feel like he'd be one of the least threatening of, of uh, the least threatening of them. You know, if I had to choose one of the Republicans. Like Gary Johnson's I, the I, wild I, younger brother. Yeah, you I know? mean, like, like I might go for, you know, if I had to choose any one of the Republicans running, I mean, of course, uh, my first choice would be Rand, and then my second choice yeah. would probably be John Kasich, you know? If um, I had to stack Republican candidates, I guess that would probably be what I would do also. Word. So, I mean, I know he, he I mean, at least my home state, uh, he came in second to uh, Donald Trump. Huh. Um at least in the Republican, yeah, because uh, most most Republicans in New York are moderate, and you know they don't like making crazy waves. You know they like more moderate candidates, and John Kasich was kind of the, the closest thing they were going to get. So they liked him, but apparently Trump, f for some fucking reason, you know, it's funny. I never see any Hillary. I don't see a lot of Hillary shit. I'm noticing a shitload of Trump stuff now. A shitload of it. But before, I always saw Bernie, 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 Bernie. But yet Hillary won New York. So we already know what we have to say about that. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think Bernie won New York. Fucking voter fraud. <laughs> Fucking reptile. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean... It it's definitely this, this whole election, you know, um, she's a even, fucking lizard. I've said it a million times, even with the Democrats, I think the first debate, there was only four or five of the motherfuckers on the stage. And by the second debate, there was only three, you know, yeah, it's, I mean, um, yeah, they, they were, they totally, um, they wanted to give Hillary as little competition as possible. They wanted to weed out the competition quickly. Bernie was a thorn in their side. And it, apparently Bernie came out, um, you know, defending Hillary on the WikiLeaks thing. Like, uh, well, if WikiLeaks could have gotten a hold of my emails, they would have seen me saying just as bad shit about Hillary, you know? And it's like, okay, well, 
I think that we the, already the, know. The everybody is. knows that this is. I, I honestly think that's exactly what Bernie Sanders thinks. That Bernie Sanders, yeah, I think, thinks there's, he's there's the biggest piece of some, shit on the probably planet. There's probably some truth to that, but you know, Hillary's also got the Clinton News Network. I mean, she's got the whole establishment on her side, stacking the decks against like. You know every other candidate, and I don't know, man. That, that's just like know. fucking I, really. I, I almost really, I know, <laughs> really but I, 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 almost, I almost really want to see like is Bernie Sanders is like the honestly fucking crazy liberal guy. You know what I mean? You know, like the guy who honestly thinks all this shit might actually work and have good intentions, not like just some leftist bullshit politician. Like I really would like to think that Bernie's that much of an idealist. At least would have some type of philosophical principles to him, even if I disagree with him morally. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would be nice to have a crazy other, another crazy alternative. <laughs> oh man, um, yeah. It, 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 that's just what it is. It, it's just been a whole lot of crazy. Fucking nutpack. So, what's what's next on the agenda? Oh, um, uh, Madonna. Oh yeah, Madonna. Yeah. So Madonna um, was, uh, you know, taking the high road this week. Of course. And, uh, <laughs> oh man, was and, she uh, ever offering to give uh, blowjobs for uh, Clinton votes? She said that any single male that can show her that she, that they voted for Hillary Clinton will get a blowjob from her, and in in depth, in depth went through how she performs. Um. Informing that she uh, is a is a lady and um, will swallow as well. You which, know, like like I, I, I gotta say, when what, it comes to Madonna, dude, the like, hell? when it comes to Madonna, like I was like the only kid in my neighborhood growing up who just never, I was never attracted to Madonna. No, there was <laughs> I'm there, sorry. no. I was, like, for, the me, kid, for, I, for me, there was one time. One and there was yeah, you had one Madonna chubby. No, one instance, no, dude, and it is Madonna in a league of their own. And I don't even think I saw that. Movie, oh, dude. dude, with Tom Hanks and Gina Davis, and that, uh, your girl Rosie O'Donnell. Uh, Rosie O'Donnell, yeah. Rosie O'Donnell's in that too. Yeah, yeah, she's she's in that. Um, uh, John Lovitz, fucking John Lovitz, <laughs> <laughs> it's. Thanks. Okay, maybe I'll have to see that movie. Oh, um, dude, you it's, know, it's just cause if, such if I'm a good bored movie. and it's on Netflix, it's uh, a good, it's a it's about baseball. Dude, and if it sucks, man, I'm gonna call you fuck up and say, "Fuck you, Josh Davalofagus." It's a great movie. And, Actually, and you know, we'll probably Madonna watch it. Is, we'll Madonna probably watch pretty... it when you're over my house and we're just like up uh, getting blazed one night. We'll probably throw that on, dude. And Absolutely. If it's bad, I'm gonna fuck with you, dude. Fine, dude. And if it's good, I'm still gonna fuck with you because that's what I do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you do. You do. That's what you do. That is what you do. It is a great movie, though, dude. It's probably one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, but, oh, man. What, what the fuck? That was some craziness. <laughs> uh, it is one. I think it's one of my favorites. So uh, that, we have Madonna. We talked about Madonna. Uh, Dennis Kucinich. Yeah, okay. Dennis Kucinich. He's like, he's the Democrat that I would like to see run for president, you know? And who would never fucking win? I mean, dude, I would like to see him win. He would um, never win. I would like to see him win, um, you know, because he's he's good on the drug war. He's, um, you know, first and foremost above that. And first and foremost, my major important number one issue is he's great on war in general. He's anti-war. He, he's fucking awesome. He's, he's it's, to my knowledge, he's the best uh, Democrat that's uh, been around in my lifetime. Um, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. There's really no best Democrat I could name. If I, if I had to name one, it would probably be Dennis Kucinich. Yeah, I mean, I would say he he beats the hell out of Bernie. And, oh, absolutely. And you know, he's just not. He, and the thing is, he's also he's not flamboyant. That's another reason why he's not so big. Bernie's and, much more flamboyant. Yeah, and I mean, Dennis Kucinich. It's like whether whether I, I disagree with him or not. Um, and, and I do. There's plenty of areas where I do. It's like I, I never don't believe that he isn't a, a good, well-intentioned person. Now, granted, the I've said a million times the the path to hell is paved with good intentions. But um, you know, it's for me the number one issue is war, 
and it, it's 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 all these wars that we've been getting ourselves in that you know might be getting us into World War Three now. Like you know, yeah, I Russia, mean, with Russia's... Russia, dude. It, it's some fucking badass shit, dude. And with fucking uh, if Hillary becomes president, it could be World War Three. You know, but I, at the I same time, to, if, I, if I Trump becomes president, say... if Trump be, did out of some miracle become president, and I say miracle, but I mean what miracle? And I don't say it as miracle as in that would be a good thing. Um, in, in a way, I, I feel like it would be a good thing because i hate hillary so much but i mean i can see trump getting us into war with fucking china how, how do you say it josh china yeah china <laughs> you know, i mean i can see either one of these china. motherfuckers getting us into world war three um yeah but uh kucinich I, I you know i, I like kucinich because like he's actually still anti-war left and I'd, i honestly dude if this if we went to war with russia I might try to relocate to Russia um, only because I don't think I don't I do not believe that the United States is fully prepared for a conventional war that they can win. Um, I, I hate to say that. I mean, really, dude, we spend more on our military than like the, the top nine countries in the world. Last time I checked. It doesn't matter. I mean, dude, I don't think I that don't they're know. prepared. I, I, think, I think when you're when you're saying that, I mean, no offense, I'm not trying to, to piss you off, but I think maybe you've heard like because my dad was actually saying this earlier. He he was over visiting the grandchild, and you know he he thinks like our military is in shambles, and it's like that's just this this right wing rhetoric, you know, like oh we need to spend more on the military. It's whatever, dude. We already spend more than the top nine countries in the fucking world. No, I I don't. It, it's not even what I'm saying. I I just don't think that we're as prepared as everybody thinks they are. We're we're not. We're not ready. I we're, n number one. We're not. We're, I don't think our our eyes are ready to see a uh, a war with people that look just like us. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, I'm 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 I mean that sincerely. I mean that sincerely. Hmm. Yeah. I don't think I don't think that they are ready to have to rationalize the human the human condition in a war. I don't think this is the thing that this country has done in a long time, and I don't think that they're that they're emotionally ready to have to actually deal with a real fucking war, not a war of opportunity, but a war of actual you know potential, you know, defense. No, it, it sounds like Hillary's ready for it. Yeah, you know, it's no. fucking scary too. Oh no. man, no, it's, I don't believe she is either. I think she's she's going to cause it too. You know, I mean, it's, it's back to back to Dennis Kucinich because you know, like I I know I have a lot of friends who are are on the left, and uh, you know, a lot of these friends are are Bernie supporters, and uh, you know, and you know, I, I can sympathize with uh, their Bernie support. You know, I I do feel like Bernie's a little more genuine than what you normally see as far as the Democratic candidates go. But because uh, he's, he's an independent, and once again, man, it, like it, I, I feel like it's a shame that uh, Kucinich never got that support because yeah. Kucinich is so much better, dude. He's just like he's just so much more principled, um, if you ask me. I, um, I honestly believe that too. I think he's a very genuine person. Yeah, and then Kucinich actually uh, came out and said uh, the FBI, um, the FBI's investigation on Hillary was fixed. Yep. So I mean, yep. to have the balls to say that right now, I mean, and go as a and, Democrat. And, yeah, exactly. You know, he's I mean, speaking out against granted, his he, own. He's, he's not party's in politics nominee. anymore. He's not in politics anymore. But he, he fucking hates Hillary Clinton. He sees her for what she is—a fucking neocon. You know, he's yeah. he's more about principle than party. Exactly, and I think, but I, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, so you know what? If something happens to Dennis Kucinich, that's it. All bets are off. Uh, and nothing's gonna happen to him. He, he he's off on the sidelines now. He he can spot I, I, shit. And you I know what, know. dude? Nobody like fucking. You probably only heard about that because I threw it up on the Daily Liberator. Like nobody else was talking about that. You know what I mean? It'll still skid around. It's it's still I mean, a liability. It's I I, I don't think uh, who knows. I mean, Hillary's God, probably I killed. Hillary could probably killed a lot of people. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's a shame, dude. Um, but anyways, props to Dennis Kucinich. You know, the guy fucking rocks. What else we got going on? Oh, the libertarians don't matter. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's why w will libertarians ever matter in politics? You know, because when you look at politics, you know, you, you see a lot of big money, 
you know, and you know, you've got all these big money corporations, you know, it's like Hillary Clinton. She's all the fucking big money, you know? And, and then meanwhile, you know, you've got people on the left saying, well, yeah, libertarians, they, uh, um, you know, Coke brothers. Have, yeah. Coke you know, brothers. Yeah, that, exactly. You, you hear all that and you hear like, oh yeah, the, the big money businesses, they love libertarians. And you know, that's a total falsehood because you know, the big money, money businesses, the, what they love are Democrats and Republicans that they can pay off. They do not want a free market. They want regulations, you know, catered to, to fit them catered to knock out their competition. They do not want libertarianism. So, you know, maybe maybe that's why uh, libertarians uh, will never get elected. Uh, it's good. I, I, I believe so. I, I really don't. I really don't foresee a. Uh, it's sad because I would really love to get an actual libertarian candidate, even if Gary Johnson were to get the nom- to get to to win. And that still wouldn't be the a full a full on libertarian can- enough candidate for me. But I mean, he's he's something that I can say that. He, I, I would love to see a candidate like him. Oh yeah, I, I would too, dude. I mean, I think a lot of people rag on Gary, and you know, I'm not going to say he's a hundred percent libertarian, <laughs> and I definitely don't believe that Bill Weld is the original libertarian. <laughs> no, but you but, know what though, I do. I also do. I do like Bill Weld. I really do. Bill Weld. And, I don't think he's libertarian at all. I think I think he's more of a liberal Republican. And, exactly. You know, I think he's still a liberal. I, I think he's still a liberal Republican. But I think as far as I think, I think uh, you know, I think he, Gary Johnson's much more libertarian. <laughs> but absolutely. But I think Weld. I think weld it brings this weld weld a, a, a competent speaker whereas oh you know, god yeah uh, you know it's sadly gary johnson is not all the time a competent speaker no he's not um it, it's that's the thing dude it's like he needs to fucking he needed to bring his fucking a game and he obviously didn't bring his fucking a game um and you know at the same time at the same time you know the media was totally against him you know they, they i think they blew the aleppo thing totally out of the water and i'll be the first to admit i didn't know what the fuck aleppo was and i firmly believe that 90 percent when, when they asked 90 the of americans did yeah i firmly believe that 90 percent of americans didn't know what aleppo was I, mean, I knew what aleppo was okay well congratulations but like a bunch of people didn't dude that's why it was like the most googled word like uh, for well, days well absolutely you know? i mean but the funniest thing is, though, was when they when it, when I because I watched it, all three of the goddamn debates, travesty as they were, and you know, hours of my life I can never get back. Um, when they asked the same question, they asked, "What would you do about the humanitarian crisis facing Syria in cities like Aleppo?" They literally asked a question like they could have asked to Gary Johnson, but exactly. they weren't going to ask. Ask Gary, Gary Johnson that they're going to ask. Oh, what would you do about Aleppo? Well, you, you know, and then and then should he have known? No, absolutely. But then, I still then, think it was a con job. And then there's also the other thing too. Like if you, if you watch that that total interview, the whole thing, you know, then you see uh, Gary Johnson's like, oh, well, Syria. Oh, sorry, I had a brain fart. And then he starts uh, he starts going on about like you know uh, what we need to do over there, what's going on, you know, like. And the next day, they, they implemented it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. being about trying to be, become more diplomatic with Russia, and the next day they start they tried to become a little more diplomatic with Russia, but now there's they're having more problems over in Syria, and Russia says we need they need to step up the game, so now Russia said all right fuck it that's it we're 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 getting ready for this then, you're not gonna help fi- you're not gonna help solve the problem, get the fuck out of the way. Yep, and um. Because I really don't think Russia had anything to do with the creation of ISIS. I don't think Putin is controlling uh, Donald <laughs> Trump. I don't really believe that. Yeah, it's uh, a whole bunch of craziness, man. Fucking, what about Julian Assange this week, though? Oh, well, Julian Assange, uh, <sighs> you know, my favorite Australian. Like, like his, his internet's turned off? Yeah, uh, apparently Ecuadorian government decided wonder, to we, shut I down wonder, his internet. I wonder if it's still shut down. I don't know. Like, like I, I even read a couple of days ago. I believe on, uh, I believe it was on Zero Edge that there was a bunch of like armed troops outside of like the Ecuadorian embassy. Why? Are, why at the Ecuadorian embassy? Isn't he in Ecuador? Yeah, yeah, but he and he's he's there in an embassy. Oh, yeah. It's like he's he's been there for I think three or four years now something i I don't know he's been he's been there for a while but uh at any rate it's um 
Yeah, I mean, it's 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 all fucked up, man. It's like uh, WikiLeaks is is more legit than any government ever. You know, they've uh, provided transparency, and you know, it, it's funny mm-hmm. because when they when they provided transparency into the Bush administration, oh, well, know, was, Republicans it, hated them, and it, now they're providing transparency into uh, the all the Democratic shit, the DNC stuff, and now, uh, now the Democrats are hating them. And then, uh, and then uh, fucking little Marco the other day, he said something like. He was like warning conservatives. He was warning. He was warning. Re- sorry, uh, Republicans. He was like, uh, "Watch out! Uh, WikiLeaks could tur- WikiLeaks could do the same thing to us." And it's like, well, yeah, it wouldn't be a problem if, if you weren't saying fucked up shit, you know. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, exactly. I, I I don't care. I don't care. But I I just think it's funny that you know what now now the Democrats have to deal with. They always say that the Republicans, oh, they're dirty, they're sneaky, they're going to buy everything off, blah, 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 blah. They act holier than thou, but, you know, fine. If you want to call people out in their bullshit, go right ahead and expose them. But, you know, when you when you got, you know, a mess in your own fucking house, don't come over and try to clean mine. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Well, so we got, we got, uh, yeah. So I think that's that's uh, that's about it for this week. Um, looks like we we clocked in about an hour. That's not bad for a couple guys discussing. Yeah, that's not too yeah. bad. So uh, yeah, well, um, thanks for tuning in, and until next time, live free or die. So do the gods and the machine You can't justify killing by economic gain For God, country, and democracy You can't put freedom and death point in a fine land You stop what the truth, then bring them home I believe the jokes will do the best for you And I believe that we have the power Have the power Non-aggression principle, the violence of the state becomes absolute!